Hi everybody and welcome. In this video we're going to have a look at lines of symmetry. To give it a definition, it is a line which you can draw through a shape so that each side of the line is a reflection of the other. In fact, sometimes this is known as reflective symmetry. Some shapes don't have lines of symmetry, some have one and others can have more than one. So let's have a look at some examples. So I'm going to start with a very simple shape. This one's a triangle. And if we look at it, it's got two sides the same length and a bottom that's a little bit shorter. It's therefore an isosceles triangle. Now, as I said in the introduction, a line of symmetry is a line that cuts straight through the shape so that either side of the line are the same, but in reflection. So if you're asked this question, you simply have to look at the shape and make a decision as to where a line could go. So I'm going to start straight down the middle. So here we can see this side and this side are exactly the same. They are just in reverse. So if we were to put a mirror down the middle, one side would look the same as the other in the mirror. And another way to consider it is if we were to fold that triangle along the red line, each side would fold exactly onto each other. Let's take that line of symmetry away because when you're given a shape like this, it's worth looking to see whether or not there's more than one line of symmetry. So let's just try, for instance, turning it round so that the bottom is now that side. And you have to ask yourself the same question. Can I split it in half anywhere else? Well, if I bring a line down from here, straight down, well, clearly that doesn't work. The two sides are not the same. How about if we were to draw a line from the top and bring it maybe to halfway along? Well, again, we've tried to break the triangle into two pieces, but if we were to fold it, you can quite easily see that this half here, this point, would fold somewhere maybe over here. It certainly wouldn't cover that, so it's not a line of symmetry. And in fact, this particular shape only has one. Let's have a look at a shape that has more than one. We'll stick with a very ordinary shape. This time we're going to use the square. So again, how do we cut a square in two so that both sides are the same? Well, allowing for my usual inaccuracies, there, roughly, is a line down the centre, so that if I fold it along that line, one half covers the other one precisely. But with a square, we need to keep looking, because, for instance, there is also one that cuts across the other way. So if I fold it there, the top comes down and completely covers the bottom. There's our second line of symmetry. But we don't stop. And the best advice I can give you is if you are looking for the lines of symmetry on a shape, turn it round, look at it from a different angle, try folding it if you can. And if you look at that line there, it's now corner to corner. If I fold that square on the blue line, that top point there will exactly cover that point and the two halves are symmetrical. So there's a third one and therefore the fourth one must be across that way and the same thing applies. So in fact a square has actually got not one but four lines of symmetry. Now it's not unusual for an exam question to give you a slightly more irregular shape. Let's have a look at this one. It's an arrow. Can we split it in two? Well, certainly if we were to draw any lines at any angle, there is no way I can find a line that would split it so it would fold exactly. But nevertheless, there is one. And in this case, it is there, straight through the middle. If you can't see it from that angle, have a look by turning your head. Certainly if you fold the arrow along that centre line, the two halves would fold on top of each other. I've drawn here three regular shapes. We have a five-sided pentagon, six-sided hexagon, and eight-sided octagon. Now, the good news is that with shapes such as these, it's not so difficult to find the lines of symmetry as you might think. Because if I demonstrate with the pentagon, 
looking at the shape as it is there, you can probably see that there is a line of symmetry that takes you from the point there down to the centre of the base. And that cuts the shape exactly in two. There's a line of symmetry. Now it follows that if there's a line of symmetry from the top point to the middle of the base, there must be another one from that point to the middle of the opposite side. And also from this point here to the middle of that side, also from here to the middle of there, and finally from the fifth point up to the middle of the opposite side again. So, if you count the number of lines of symmetry, there are one, there is one coming from each corner, therefore there are five lines of symmetry, which of course is the same as the number of lines of the shape itself. And similarly, if I use the hexagon, this time the lines of symmetry go from corner to corner, so there's one, there's two, there's three, and they also go from side to side. There's one, there's two, and there's three. So in this case, the number of lines of symmetry is six for a six-sided shape. So the rule is, however many sides the shape has, that's how many lines of symmetry there are. And finally, let's have a look at this shape. Well, it's got two parallel lines, top and bottom, two parallel lines on either side, and it's called a parallelogram. Now, you would think because it's such a regular shape that we're going to be able to find some lines of symmetry in a shape like this. However, if we have a look, let's try drawing a line from the middle of the top line to the middle of the bottom, roughly about there. You can see that if I were to fold this over, this shape here would end up somewhere over here. It certainly doesn't fold onto the other side, therefore it can't be a line of reflection. And similarly, if I were to draw a line through there and fold it along like this line, well, the bottom line here would probably end up somewhere looking like that. And again, it doesn't match the top part. So in fact, although it looks like a very regular shape, let's just prove the point once more, that one across there, we fold it, that one will probably end up somewhere out there. There are no lines of symmetry, so don't ever assume that there are going to be. So do we have a general rule as to how many lines of symmetry a shape might have? Well, no, not really. The only trick is to be observant, to look at the shape that you've been given, to turn it round, to move your head, to try folding it, and to see how many you can find. So I hope that's all made sense, that covers line of symmetry. I have mentioned a few different two-dimensional shapes in this video, and in fact, I am taking a closer look at some of the properties of shapes in one of my other videos, and there should be a link to that one on the screen now if you want to take a look at it. Please subscribe and if you hit the notifications button it will let you know whenever I produce a new video. Thank you.